In this video, we're going to show you how Allure Test Ops can help you improve your development workflow. We're going to see an example project and we're going to detect the bug and then write a test and a defect for it. We link that to a Jira issue and then of course we fix the bug and we see how Test Ops can help us here. So what we have, we have an example project that is based on Java and on Spring, which is a project for coffee orders. So we can use some very example website to create some coffee. We can create, for example, some espresso drink from some specific origin, and we're going to create that. Now we would like to use this and test this. And for that, we use Allure Test Ops to get an overview over what we have. And then we will run an example pipeline. And then of course, execute all of our tests and see what we have here in our project. So for that, we're going to have a look at the code real quick. This is available on GitHub and we use our spring project here that uses spring in this uh, specific version. And just for the dependencies, it's quite straightforward, it uses JUnit and um, some sort of testing. And also we use the Allure JUnit 5 dependency, but this is just included so that the test run well works with all of the Allure results. We're not using any of the code yet, so you can get started very quickly. You don't have to add any um, code annotations if you don't want to. And with this, we can just get started. What we do then is as follows. I have an example pipeline here that of course you, while well, in a bigger project, you would include in your CI CD pipeline or you have some specific steps that you would like to execute. But just to get started, it's already sufficient just to um, execute some commands on the command line or of course in some bash script. So what we're going to do is the following that we run certain Maven commands in order to execute all of the unit tests that we have. So you could execute Maven test or Maven verify. And then also to include some integration tests. So we already have some tests that are based on, well, system test um, technolo technologies and also Selenium and Selenite that actually verify that all of these things in our application work as expected. And then, of course, we're going to take all of the results and upload that. For this, we use the um, command line functionality to create new launches, which we will see in a second. So what this does is as follows. It will execute some tests. For this, we have specific unit tests that, for example, uh, just what use our code. You can check this out um, on GitHub, how this um, exactly works, and then just verify some things. So this is just one example. It's not that interesting what the test exactly does, but we will see that this works both, of course, for unit tests and then for more integrative tests to see, OK, what would we like to um, have here? So for instance, what is more interesting is the UI test. So that is just one example that doesn't really test much for now. We're going to enhance this in a second, uh, which, well, just ad adds and uh, starts up um, Selenite and then goes to our page to then, well, go to the index page, which, uh, which we have just seen in the browser and then see what we can do there. We have another more fully fledged test that also already takes the form to create a new order, which you will see once we run the test. Let's do this. Let's run our example pipeline to see what we have here. So what it will do, it runs the unit tests first and then runs the integration tests. And now real quick, you will see the browser being started up and does really quickly what I did before manually. And then it already says, well, build success. So all of the tests apparently were successful. And then it also creates, well, the launch here that we can then have a look either in the navigation or directly with the link in our test ops, where then we see, okay, this launch just has been um, created and uploaded. And well, success, we have 100% success rate of all of our 14 test examples. So we can now explore this a little bit. It will out of the box detect the suites that we have here. So again, for the easier integration, I didn't do anything with the code. I didn't use the annotations from test ops yet. 
So you can um, do this, of course, for getting a better overview or nicer names. And in uh, later videos, we will show you uh, that in more detail, especially if you're interested in this. But it's also very interesting to see that just out of the box, it creates a nice overview of the tests and everything you have here. So with the list of all test results, we will see, well, this is just well everything that we have here. We have specific parameterized tests and, of course, also um, some create coffee orders. This is a UI test, which you see in this suite that we used that then uses the website functionality to do everything here. Okay, so with this, that's already quite a straightforward, but we see now everything works, which is good. So the launch here was fully successful. We can close the launch now. That's fine. But now assuming we would say, well, we just detected a bug, maybe some user detected a bug in production. Let's say for an easy example, this welcome message should be different. Okay, so for example, it should be welcome exclamation mark or something like that. Okay, then what will we do now? Well, first of all, typically you write some sort of issue or a ticket. So let's say you use, well, maybe an integration like Jira. So you have a Jira board with some issues and we say, okay, now we actually want to create a ticket or a bug here for this specific issue and say, well, for example, the welcome a message should be correct or needs to be fixed. And then we say, okay, the welcome uh, message should be something like a welcome exclamation mark, for instance. So this could be a thing that we say, okay, now please just create a Jira issue. Now we can have a look at that and see, okay, this is now a thing. Of course, what to do next? Well, what to do next is we should actually write a test for it so that this fails in our test run and that we see, okay, what um, should this, what should um, test, uh, what should be tested here? For this, we can have a look at our um, test that we have. So this is something I um, already prepared for it. Check the headline on the index page where now we should say, okay, the index page should actually has a method assert page header where we say the page header should be in a specific um, name. So welcome explanation mark. What does this do? This index view is a class that has been created here in this um, well system test scope, if you want, and it uses selenite to access well this functionality on the index page body and the h1 tag should have exactly the text that is here so that's that and then we can say well please assert the page header so this uses the selenite functionality to check the element to see if the text matches or not okay now if i do this just to write the text with the expected one then I would actually expect that the test now fails. Let's try this out because now I just changed the test and now I could have a look. The unit tests still run, but let's have a look what the integration test, the UI tests do. And you saw it took a little bit longer because it's waiting for the correct element. And here you see, okay, there are test failures. Now we could already have a look at what fails here, but of course we can have a look at that as well in Allure Test Ops. So I can follow the link um, again or just go to the overview of the launches. And now I see there's a second launch that just has been uploaded. And here, not all of the tests pass. Now one test is failing. Okay. So here it says, well, success rate is not 100% anymore. And we also see an unresolved test result. So this is now something, well, not only is it failing, but it also says unresolved. We don't really know yet what that is. So it's sort of a new um, test, not a new test, but a new uh, test result that, that failed. Okay, so here we see this now failed. It's part of the suite and which is the Java class. And we see also, well, it failed for that reason. So we have the message here, which exactly says, well, what it does, the element should have the text welcome exclamation mark in this element and it doesn't. So the element that we have is this one. Okay, so what to do now? Now we have a failing test, which first of all is good because now that well corresponds to the issue we created, but it's not linked or well detected yet. So this is a very interesting feature that helps us a lot in test stops where we can get a better overview that we say, okay, this test and especially this um, criteria, what failed, so why this test failed, corresponds to the issue that we have. 
And this is something that can be linked to an issue and to what is called a defect in test ops. So we could say, okay, now we would like to, well, create this as a sort of known issue, as a defect that we have that later on we can fix. How to do this? Well, we could go to the defects, but we don't have any for now. We can create one here, or also we can create some directly here in the failing test. We can go to the failing test and say link defect, and then we can go and, well, create, um, create or select a defect here. So for example, the welcome message should be correct, something like this. So this would search and filter for the defects. We don't have any, but we can create one directly. So we go here and say, okay, this should be a new def defect. And then also what we can do, we can create an automation rule. What that is, is as follows that then for the next test runs, for the next test launches, if, well, a test fails for the same reason, so if that is the same reason what we just uh, had, then it will be linked as well. So then we have to do the manual work only once and in the future, this automation rule will take care of that. So this is a very um, interesting feature. We can say welcome message uh, should match like this and the reason why we copy this in for the pattern that not only if this um, test is failing but then if the uh, if a test is failing for the same reason that then this defect will be linked okay so in order to see if we made this rule correctly let's have a look at the match results so for all of the tests which one matches here yeah that's the correct one so just to double check okay and we can link the whole thing and in other words, to create a defect, which is then created here, which you can also see on the defect. So now we have a new defect that the welcome message should be correct. Okay, One, what is more, we can also and should also now link this um, to our JIRA board. So we could also create a JIRA issue here, or if we already have one, we could link it. And thanks to the JIRA integration, it will automatically find it and select one. So Jira is nicely integrated here in test ops. You can have a look at the documentation, how to set this up. I can link the issue here, which now is linked here as well. You will see under the settings that I have the integration being set up for uh, Jira here. So this works quite nicely. And what is quite interesting, the status is updated here automatically. So there's the integration working so we could say for example if now the issue would already be fixed so i say i switch my jira issue to done this then also updates my defect so now the defect would already be closed of course that's not what i want because it isn't closed uh, yet so let's say it's still in progress and then it would be open again because now the defect is actually well it's still unresolved so now we see that the defect is part of the launch here. If I go back to my launch, say, okay, this test result is not unresolved anymore. It is a known defect. And it says, well, the welcome message still needs to be fixed. Okay, so not everything is passing, but at least it's a known thing now. Okay, if I do this again, this is what I want to test now. If I run the pipeline again, what do I expect? I still expect the test to fail. Of course, we didn't fix it yet. But now in my new, well, upload, in my new launch in test ops, I want to see that the defect is now automatically linked to test if my automation rule was done correctly. So if I now go to a new launch, I can close the old one. I still see, okay, there is a defect here. So probably, yes, this worked. It's not an unresolved test result anymore, the test that is failing, but now this defect is showing here. So that's what I want. That's good. I can uh, close the launch. And now we can actually go and fix this test or fix the issue that our welcome message should be correct. So this is already a helpful workflow. As you can see here, it gives you a nice overview over the state of all of your tests. Let's now go and see how we can fix this issue. Our page header should be welcome exclamation mark. And if we go to our HTML template here under index, then we see that this is our HTML code with well the table and some links and the h1 tag, which then has a text that comes actually from well a field that is set in the controller and that 
well in fact comes from our application properties so this is something that is configured here we could have a look at the index controller and we will see that the index controller just adds some attributes especially the greeting which comes from a configured value and here our ide already shows us the value of it let's follow this to our application properties so this is actually the welcome message which we now can change to welcome exclamation mark so this is now well so to say the fix of the production code okay in order to see an update i also need to well restart or rebuild my project so here for simplicity reasons everything runs locally on my machine so i rebuild and rerun everything here from my spring project what it does in this example and you can see this if you check out the code it builds everything here and runs it as docker containers so now it starts up the spring example project and if i now go in my browser then i should already see the update so it should already have welcome exclamation mark it restarted all of the containers including the database so everything is gone but that doesn't matter now the message should already be fixed but of course i want to see this in my test run so let's see if I run my pipeline again with the test pipeline, what would I now expect? Well, I would expect that all of the tests now pass because, well, we just fixed it. So I hope at least. And now it will upload the new launch and then we can have a look at test ops, what it says. And yes, now everything passes again. Okay, perfect. So now everything is green. We can close the launch and also we can, well, close our issue so now we said this is fixed done and as you've seen before by doing so it should close the defect in test ops as well let's double check yes this is now closed okay perfect so now this is um, an example workflow how you can detect a bug and then create the corresponding issues and defects and then well link and match that in your test ops overview so just for one more example, let's assume that now everything is green, but maybe sometimes this happens, the issue was not actually resolved. So maybe I just, well, I didn't properly test it and the defect might appear again. So you've seen that the defect already was closed because of the Jira issue, but assuming now, well, it wasn't quite correct. So let's say I undo this or I change it to welcome a question mark. And now if I would rebuild my project and run the whole thing again, well, what would I expect? That the test of course fails again because now the message would be different. Let's wait for the application to start up and then I can run my example pipeline again. And then I would expect that now the whole thing fails again. And because the defect is closed, then well, the defect as you will see will not automatically be linked in test ops because now it's well a defect that is not open we will see this in a second so one thing after another first of all the um, test was failing as you could expect let's have a look at the new launch so we have one failing test and as you can see the test result is unresolved so this is on purpose why because the defect we expect it to be closed so now you would say okay um, we still have the same message, but now this only works if the defect is open. So you would expect that the developer has to do something. So now we go to defects and we see, okay, this was not actually closed. We can have a look at the Jira issue and say, okay, wait a second, it was not done yet. So we would need to reopen it again. And then we see this is linked again. And then we well should properly fix the bug. So you see, this is also an important point. Uh, with the linking and the auto detection of the defect here that we say okay was it actually uh, fixed if not then we have to do something which then again is shown in the launch as an unresolved test result so whenever some attention is needed which is important for us to well focus on the things that require our attention here in this overview which are known defects and which are still unknown or unexpected uh, defects and unexpected test failures so this was another example how test ops can help us getting a better overview of our ultimate state of testing. And this was some example uh, pipeline and example project that you can use. Thanks a lot for watching.